Hi there, in today's video we are going to talk about the Compass Eddy. We're going to jump into the whiteboard and we're going to make a very practical example in order for you to understand what is the difference between a Compass Eddy, a Magnetic Eddy, a True Eddy. Okay, you will understand in full why when you are flying, you are actually flying a Compass Eddy and not a Magnetic Eddy or a True Eddy. Alright, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from pilotclimb.com. I help you to become a better pilot. So if this is what you want to do, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to support my job, please give it a like to the video because this really helps the channel to grow. So without further ado, let's talk about compass heading and let's jump into the whiteboard. First of all, guys, what is a compass heading? When you are flying, okay, what you are reading on your compass, that is a compass heading. What does it mean? Why is it called compass heading and not true heading or magnetic heading? It's called compass heading because it uses the compass north and the compass north is a different north compared to the magnetic north and the true north. Let me explain you why is that. Okay guys, so looking at the whiteboard here, you know that the true north is the vertical axe that goes through the magnetic uh, sorry, to the, uh, through the North Pole and the South Pole. So if I draw the globe in here, something like that, okay? So as you know, the globe spins throughout the day because it, it, by spin it's going to give us the days and the nights, all right? So the globe spins around a vertical axe. This is called the true North, okay? It's the vertical axe that goes through the North Pole and the South Pole, okay? On top of that, you know that the globe, around the globe, we've got a huge magnetic field. And where this magnetic field starts on the North Pole and it ends on the South Pole, the point at which the magnetic field is actually pointing is called the magnetic north. And the thing with the magnetic north is that it's not collocated with the true north. Okay, it's close to the true north, but it's not in the same position. Okay, so let's say the true north in here and the magnetic north is something like this okay so as you can see in there we've got two different north okay first of all is the true north and then the other one is the magnetic north because it takes as a reference the magnetic field so what will happen if you take a compass you will see that the compass will always point to the uh, to the magnetic north okay will always indicate you where the magnetic north is and not where the true north is because the the compass will feel this magnetic field okay fantastic so now let me ask you something what will happen if you take that compass that you are uh, that you are uh, holding on your hand okay in a place where you don't have any additional magnetic field and you put inside an aircraft that compass that the aircraft has got a magnetic field because it's got instrumentation it's got metals and so on what will happen is that that compass that before was pointing the magnetic north will have a small error okay this small error will make to, will make the compass to point the compass north all right so what you have to know and understand is that the compass north is not a fixed value either because if you take that compass that you were holding in an open field with no magnetic field and you put that compass inside a Cessna 172 that has got its own magnetic field what will happen is that it's going to have that error okay but however if you take that compass from the Cessna 172 and you put the same compass inside the Boeing 737, for example, the Boeing 737 has got a different magnetic field. Thus, it's going to have a different error. Thus, the compass will point at different compass north. All right? Okay, guys, so if I draw in here the true north, okay, this is our true north, TN, then we can write down in here the magnetic north, all right, MN, magnetic north, and then in here the compass north. Now you understand why we've got these three different norths, okay? So guys, again, very important, the magnetic north in this is just an example because the magnetic north is not a fixed value, okay? It changes from place to place and throughout the year. But in order to make sure we get we get to the target of today's video is to understand why the compass heading is different compared to the magnetic heading and the true heading, okay? So let's say you're flying on a heading 0, 9, 0 degrees. So 0, 9, 0 degrees, I can do something like that, this one, here we go. So that's the heading and that's your plane, okay? So I draw the plane in here very nicely, <laughs> here we go. So as you can see, I can write down here 0, 9, 0. So as you can see, guys, you know, we've got 0, 9, 0. But you, from the picture, you can clearly see that the angle between the true north, let me, let me change the color in order to make sure it's... Uh, it's very clear okay so the angle between the true north and the 
adding of your aircraft is not 0 and not 0, right? And the angle between the magnetic north and your aircraft heading is not 0 and not 0 either. The thing, is that, the thing that is actually 0 and not 0 is the angle between the compass north and your aircraft heading, okay? Because you're always flying, taking as a reference the compass north for the reasons that we just explained, okay? So how can you actually uh, find out what's your true heading, what's your magnetic heading, and what's your compass heading, okay? Because we've got three different headings. One is the compass heading, CH. Once one is the, uh, what is true heading? Let me do this, here we go, true heading. And the other one is the uh, magnetic heading, which is the green one, okay? Magnetic heading. All right, guys, so let's have a look at the picture. Let's start from the compass heading, okay? I take the compass heading in there, and as you can see, the compass heading is 0, 9, 0, because we take as a reference the, the compass north, so 0, 9, 0 degrees. Now, let's talk about the true heading. How can you actually, actually, let's start from the magnetic heading, because it's easier to understand. As you can see, the magnetic heading is this angle from the magnetic north to the heading of your aircraft. In order to calculate the magnetic heading, you simply need to take the compass heading, which is the 0 and the 0 degrees, and subtract this part, right? This angle, this angle between the compass uh, north and the magnetic north is called deviation, okay? Deviation, okay? So once you know your deviation, you can actually calculate what is your magnetic heading. Where you find the deviation? You find the deviation in a table that is, should be below or above your compass. Okay, so when they actually calibrate the compass, they actually find out what is this deviation, what is this error, this compass error. Okay, so in this case, let's call deviation, for this example, let's call it 10 degrees. Okay, so the compass has got a difference, uh, uh, a mistake of 10 degrees west. That means that the compass, it, points a north that is 10 degrees west from the magnetic north all right so since the compass north sorry since the compass heading is 90 degrees the magnetic heading will be something smaller because it's only this angle okay as you can see there so you take the 90 you subtract the deviation in that case it's going to be 80 okay so the compass then uh, sorry the i know we're talking about the magnetic heading in this case it's going to be 80 degrees Okay, because we simply took the 90 degrees and we subtract the deviation, which is in this case, we just said it was 10 degrees. Okay, now in order to find out what is the uh, true, uh, what is the true, uh, the true heading, we need to take the compass north, or you can even take the magnetic, uh, magnetic heading, which is the green arrow, and subtract this value in there, as you can see, because the uh, true heading is simply the magnetic heading minus this angle, okay? This angle, guys, is called variation. Variation, all right? So you find the variation in the chart depending on your location and time of the year. You've got that information there. So once you know your variation and once you know your magnetic heading, you can actually calculate your true heading. So let's say for this example, our variation uh, is five degrees to the west because it's west, guys, because the true north is here and the, the magnetic north is five degrees to the west, okay? It's, it's left five degrees and the compass north is 10 degrees to the west of the magnetic north. So in this case, what we can do, we can actually say that the true heading is equal to the magnetic heading minus this little angle in there, which is five degrees. So five degrees, Sorry, 80 minus 5, that means 75 degrees. All right, I take that one and I do 75 degrees. So guys, as you can see, the aircraft is doing one thing but has got three different heading. And that's why you've got this compass heading, sorry, this compass north, this magnetic north, and this true north, okay? It is important that you understand what is your deviation, what is your variation, in order to understand what, how can you calculate the difference heading, okay? Again, guys, this is just an example. Depending on the aircraft field, magnetic field, the compass, the deviation, okay, the deviation can be even east. So that means that the north that the compass is pointing is on the right of the true, uh, of the magnetic north. So this is just an example. If it's west, is on the left, if it's an east, it's from the east to the right. Okay, very easy. 
Okay, I hope you now understand better what is the compass north, what is the magnetic north, the true north, and what is the compass heading. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and then I will help you out. Also, go to pilotcrime.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one.